Hello and welcome. This is Heavy Business. I'm Aaliyah. And I'm Curtis. And today we are here with artist extraordinaire Adrian Baxter, who has worked with artists such as Paradise Lost, The Halo Effect, Blackbraid, and more. Thank you so much for making time for us today, Adrian, and coming on the podcast. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, I guess I'll we'll start right at the beginning. And I want to ask, well, the beginning of your foray into doing art for metal bands. How did you get into and get started with creating art artwork for metal bands? Yeah, so it all started from me drawing purely for myself as a hobby um, and kind of growing up with that from basically day one. Um, I then went from kind of keeping it to myself and then putting things online. Like I used to really enjoy seeing the process photos of other artists I saw online. So I kind of, you know, figured someone might enjoy the little little post that I put up of my work. Uh, and then as things kind of uh, build up over the years, more people kind of see your work and then it ends up as bands see your work. And then it's kind of a, an almost organic process where I just, I keep drawing, keep putting it up. I'm not kind of aiming for anything in particular other than I I always see it as adding to the pot with other creatives of like, so it's, I, I imagine it's similar with the musicians kind of, you see someone else working, it inspires you to work. And I, I want to kind of keep that cycle going really. And then uh, one day I had, I think it was a couple of local bands, uh, some of them needed work over the course of a year. I saw it as almost like a one-off type thing. I was like, okay, that, that would be interesting. I never really, I'd never imagined I'd been doing it nearly 10 years later, not not even close. Uh, enjoyed the process of that. That went down really well. And then I think word of mouth from there, really, just like I say, as natural as it could be. Um, and here I am now. <laughs> I'm just kind of, look up every every so often and, and and get reminded of all the different projects so uh, yeah really super organic really fun uh and it's it's been really interesting if you had to like pick one of your pieces in the past that sums up your sign signature style what do you think it would be that's an interesting one um because i feel like i cover a small handful of not different styles but different influences like some of my work is quite ornamental um almost floral in, in some parts and then some of the part some other pieces are a lot darker so without picking out one particular piece something that's dark but with the the kind of uh the ornamental parts maybe surrounding it anything that's similar to that i feel like that's my um my central kind of aesthetic, I suppose. And then with working with bands, you kind of lean sometimes either side of that, you know, um, which is, which is it's, it's fair enough. Um, so when my personal, when I work on my personal work between commissions, that's generally the path I go down. So uh, in terms of color wise, like for style, I feel like I, I wouldn't, if I had to present one piece in particular, I probably wouldn't present a colored piece. It'd be more of the monotone. Uh, just because I feel like I'm still finding my feet with that a little bit. I have a kind of a question that kind of leads that we have later, but I I, I just kind of just got brought up in my mind. So let's say a band reaches out to you uh, to get, get, get some work done, obviously. How do you kind of decide whether or not you actually want to work with them? Do you have to check the music? How do you kind of, or do you only do specific bands like how do you how do you kind of figure it out yeah that's a fair question um <laughs> so it's mostly i instantly before i even um start typing a reply i i find their online presence find their music um not certainly not in any kind of judgmental way just in a pure do i feel like my work connects with it you know because uh, even though the band may feel that I feel like it's it's really important for both sides to feel that. Um, once that goes well, and I can kind of, I can see actually, I can visualize the project working music wise. Uh, and this, that next part has come with 
the experience of doing it for so long, I think, for me. How that initial email is put together is almost as important as the work. And then I realise to some people that might sound really, really picky. But if it's a really, like, lazy email with no information, just how much for this, how much for, you know. I hate that. I kind of, it's almost, it's a red flag for me now. <laughs> and the music has to be really good for me to kind of get past that barrier. And I only say that because when you're in the thick of a project and communication has to be as clear as possible from both sides, myself included, um, I know now to refer back to that initial email. I don't want that in the middle of discussing uh, commission fees, bank details, design changes, anything like that. Once the, those two parts, the, the, I'm not saying I need like a full professional email on that. I'm not saying that. Just show me you've thought about that initial interaction just a little bit, and that's enough for me. Um, so then I basically reply to them as uh, trying to get as much information as I can for the amount of work, the style of work, uh, any particular pieces of mind that's urged them to get in touch. So I know kind of roughly, like I said in the previous question, I cover some slightly different styles. So if they're aiming to one of those in particular, that helps me down the line to kind of keep things on track, really. Um, and then we just go from there. And I, I, you know, every band has their own kind of schedule going on. So sometimes there could be delays in communication, which is fine. Um, and then you just roll with it. Each band's slightly different. And you can almost tell how much experience they've had with talking to an artist and illustrator because of their replies. Um, and that, I'm not saying those that don't have that experience is a bad thing at all. We all learn through experience. Um, but I, I've learned now to kind of roll with their approach and I, I kind of recognise how to get as much information from them as I can. And also to be able to deliver my information as clear as I can for their sakes as well. So when it comes to like conceptualization for the artwork, would you say that you prefer to kind of have more creative freedom? Like do bands usually say, well, I want a skull with this flower or like the Ouroboros or like specific design elements that they want? Or do they say, or do you prefer when they say, hey, listen to the music, draw what you see? Um, Both works, to be honest. And I, I kind of... I'm open to everything in between those as well. Um, it's nice if they have something very specific in mind that I feel I can work with, that's fine. Um, but if, they, if they're happy for me to sketch up some ideas purely from listening to the music, I'm definitely into that. But also, I make clear from the start that I'm, I'm not going to kind of keep throwing sketches at them for them to go, no, not into it, next. It's kind of, if you're putting, which I, I haven't, I think I might have had once over the years. And I think that's probably the only reason I, I say that now, just for that one time. Um, purely because that's a lot of time. It's a lot of um, creative brain space. And we, we kind of work with it that way. So I'm I'm happy for, I, I suppose ideally, my, my ideal way would, of doing it would be to them, for them to have sort of three elements in mind and say, arrange that how you how you would. You do it in your way kind of thing. And then I can listen to the music, get some ideas um, and build from there. That's usually where you get what I, what I feel would be the most interesting work. I, I have a dumb question and it probably is a dumb question, I'm gonna ask it anyways. Have you ever been asked to do something like you didn't want to do, but you kind of had to do it anyways? And how do you kind of handle that so break that question into two parts. I have been sure. asked to do something I've not wanted to do. Absolutely. I imagine yeah. every illustrator gets that. I'm sure. Um, no, I haven't done it. Fair enough. Purely because I have to be happy. The band has to be happy. Uh, and if we can't meet in the middle, it's, it's just not going to happen. I'm going to end up getting to the end of that project signing everything off, get told a release date, that's going to go public, and that's going to be very sour for me, and it's just not going to play out well. Um, 
So yeah, and I I wouldn't on the other side of that I would never push something that I felt was quote right on the band. It was like it, yeah, it I it, in my opinion it shouldn't ever be like that on either side. But it's a fair question. Like you know, there's always going to be something that comes up that doesn't quite register with me and same course. with my ideas with the band. So that's it's just a natural part of it. So okay, so just to clarify on that, what would be obviously we're not talking Nazi stuff or anything like that, but what would be some stuff that you would not want to take on in terms of projects other than the obvious, you know, offensive type stuff? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything too happy. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm a happy easy guy nice. but in terms of sort of style and aesthetic. It's, it's naturally dark. I, I'm just drawn to dark artwork, dark music. Um, I actually I did have one project that wanted some really like vibrant colors which you know that's great and I I have to politely kind of ask like you've you've seen my work yeah it does include some colors but even those colors are super muted and old and grainy uh so that at that point I send them like three or four other illustrators that I know and kind of go they may be able to take care of that um but I'm not the guy you know so I guess other than being too happy, I'm not sure there's much else. But this kind of bleeds into a question that I had. I wanted a little more um, in-depth explanation of this. You said in an interview with Upon a Midnight Dreary that you think that art should be a selfish endeavor. What do you mean by that? So I'm going to remove that question from working with bands because as I've said, there's a two-way, um, if it was all selfish, no one would ever pay for my work can they? so that question I was basically referring to it as my own personal work my own creative output um, should only aim to please me and if others enjoy it beyond that great if others don't but at least have an opinion great that's also good they've taken the time to kind of form their own opinion I'm all for that it it I realize now it did sound very blunt but I definitely meant it as blunt as that if you're create whether no matter what artistic output it is music painting drawing anything just make yourself happy whatever that is whether it's a drawing the same flower every day i don't know anything that, that resonates with you and keeps you happy keep you keeps you coming back to that that's all that matters in my opinion yeah, I mean, I think there's there are like different approaches to art, but I think that's the one that I identify with the most. And I think bands could benefit from thinking that way too when it comes to creating their music. So I yeah, I think it's, it's a very valid perspective. Yeah, and I think uh, using bands as a, uh, as a strong point would be, you also have to recognize that just because you're keeping you happy, it's not going to be the most necessarily the most popular thing in the world like there's a reason why certain giant bands resonate with so many people is because they've got something in there that's kind of oh, I don't want to say like mediocre but almost middle ground that a lot more people can resonate with which is great that's fine but when it comes to art if you're aiming to get that um that middle ground that resonates with more people than you. I'm not, not sure how to explain it. If you have that in your process naturally or in your work naturally, great. Go for it. You're going to be, you know, well. Yeah, but I don't think it's something you can manufacture. No, no. Inauthentically, no. right. I think people who follow your work for a while will, will see that, you know. So going back, I wanted to um, ask you why ink? Like a lot of people are moving into the digital realm with their art media. Why have you stuck with the physical media? Um, uh, I'm very stubborn is my short answer. Uh, the longer answer fair, is- Fair, fair. <laughs> I, don't get me wrong, I, I do uh, use some digital kind of enhancements after just like all my color work is digital so I'm not 100% against it not at all um but what a lot of people probably see in my work is I have a love for, for texture 
and aged kind of grit and that kind of thing. So having a physical piece of paper with a an inked piece that's kind of a little rough around the edges because I've been working on it for so long, or like a like an old sketch, pencil sketch. I love that. I love feeling the time and the, the effort that's gone into that, if that makes sense. Uh, and I've always used pen, even from being young, I used to draw with um, biro pens, like the rollerball biros, which I can't even imagine doing now, but I think it's always just resonated with me using the ink. And then as I've got into it as a, as a career, finding the right pens that work for me that kind of keep everything nice and clean in terms of, uh, the line work being clean. I can add all my textures on afterwards. So the actual ink, I don't have one to hand to show you. The actual line work in the ink is like super crisp and really clean. Uh, the only reason I don't do that in a traditional sense is through fear of ruining the work from getting the... Because the... I used to bleach paper with tea and coffee and all sorts. Um, on purpose, I never spilt it. It was always on purpose. Um, but sometimes that didn't go quite right. And I kind of felt like I ruined the drawing then. So I was like, right, okay, keep it purely ink, scan it in digitally, and then I can make all my mistakes and then get it right digitally. Um, so that's kind of worked out well. Um, and just the, I don't, just the raw, it's, it's going to sound really silly, but just holding a pen with paper, it's the most simple thing, but it's so, I don't know, there's something in me that just kind of, I can't even consider any option than, than that. I've tried sketching on Photoshop. And it just there's no kind of connection there. There's no noise of the pen. There's no no texture. So I think it comes down to that really. Just that hands on, uh, move the paper around. I just that's what works for me. I don't think it sounds silly at all. I don't know when it comes to like writing for me. If I'm writing anything, I prefer to write it pen and ink, like yeah. far more. If it's artistic. If it's artistic, I prefer to do like lyric writing or poetry or something. I prefer to write with pen. Yeah, yeah. I saw Curtis shaking his head. It's different I... from like typing a research paper or like typing out an email or something technical technical work related, then typing is the way to go. <laughs> my handwriting looks like a two-year-old, so that's why I'm like shaking my that's head. That's all that matters there. is if you can read it. So yeah. I think we're all yeah. out of practice with handwriting now. Like you say, <laughs> I, I can't oh, write shit time. anymore. I can't <laughs> write shit. I can't That's even add on. A, I, can't even, I can't even add without my phone anymore. It's like insane. But yeah. mm -hmm. other discussion. <laughs> so you mentioned in a piece with heavy music artwork that you're a big fan of Greek mythology. Does this influence your artwork style? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, more in a in a visual sense. I'm 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 certainly not super educated on the the full mythology of things but from a, a visual aesthetic um what things represented the symbology of the of things like that and it's it's not just with the greek it's the ancient egyptians uh, mesopotamia all of that just just really resonates with me so i i guess my work kind of aims to try and look like it comes from close to somewhere around that age uh, when it comes to the textures and the worn effects um, but also like the, the corner details, the border details, just to see some of those that are carved into stone and I'm just about managing to do it on paper. It's just, it's, it's fascinating. So yeah, it's definitely a big influence. It's interesting. You mentioned like those really ancient cultures when it's like pre writing. And so they told all their stories through imagery. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, that symbolism was a lot more powerful and a lot more just weighty. So that's yeah. really cool. I like that. Can I ask a couple oh, ahead, questions Chris. for the last few minutes? Um, I think we should talk about like what kind of budget should people have when they're looking for someone to do their art? Like what would it like what's too high? What's too low? I mean, obviously everybody's prices are different, but what should a band be expecting as a budget? Because I've seen bands go like 25 bucks, which is obviously too low, two in, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, which is probably too high, unless that's what you charge. Fair enough. But um, oh, no anyways, what do you what, what, what do you think? Yeah, it's uh, 
yeah, it's a tricky one is that because when I first started out, um, I was advised by someone to get in contact with other illustrators doing similar work, find out their fees. And I instantly said, no, there's no way I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. um, purely because I, I, I don't know, I, it just didn't sit right with me. So it, it's taken, I'm not sure I could give an exact figure of what's right or wrong because everyone Fair. across this Just ball, ballpark, ballpark figure is what I'm asking. Yeah. So like you say, let's take just one album cover. So not the back, not all the album inlays, not the anything, just the one cover. For me, anything under £500, so what would that be in dollars? Maybe 800, 800 US, I think, or 900 US approximately, yeah. Personally, I think that's fair in terms of giving the artist creative freedom, which basically, the way I work it is, the more freedom I have, the lower the budget. The more I have to work with your ideas and land on any edits for your vision, more time, more you know, more of the process, so it rises up then. I usually give bands a bracket of between sort of, again, it's saying it's just a cover between 500 and eight to allow room for um, extra edits that they might not have foreseen. Because I, I do allow that, but I also make very clear that the budget might move within those brackets. And I always say, you'll always know, as soon as anything's about to change budget-wise, you will know. And if you want to take a step back and keep it as it is, budget-wise, that's absolutely fine. I keep everything super crystal clear. There's no hidden kind of... So I would say that kind of price is... I don't even want to say it's kind of average because that's just for me. Like, the, there'll yeah. be illustrators now that are laughing at that. There are other illustrators that didn't realise they could charge that and everything in between. Yep. But in terms of my uh, my experience and landing on the different budgets for the, also bands have different budgets depending on who's helping fund the project. Of course, of course, available, self funded. So there's that to consider. Um, but going back to what I mentioned about the email and the details in the email, that's when all that kind of matters, you know, in terms of scheduling of payments. Uh, who's paying the deposit, who's paying the rest of it. So you just kind of wrestle with all that. And then ideally, everyone's super clear, you land on on what everyone's happy with. Um, that's probably the best advice I could give in terms of budget, to be honest. Uh, advice. Something I could advise for bands that are approaching an artist either for the first time or without a lot of experience, I would, I'd advise saying we have X amount. Um, we ideally we would love to have, let's just say, a front cover and a back cover included within that amount. That would be ideal for us. Uh, I would say start off by that, and then any illustrator should sort of be able to give them a guide of yes, I can cover this, I can cover that, but also what's included is so much artistic freedom i can take work with some of your ideas none of your ideas and it almost gives the the, the artist at the point of kind of you've shown me what you're what you're bringing to the table i can show you what i'm bringing within that then if they have any questions about that and it's basically the back and forth until you land on the the middle point where everyone's happy makes sense so speaking of that initial email you already kind of gave a general picture of how that should look, but are there any specifics that you prefer to have included in that initial email that bands might not think to include? Uh, one that you'd think would be a standard one, but isn't, is a band name. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. And this happens to us with PR too, so that's why I'm <laughs> laughing. This happens all the fucking time. All the time. Uh, yeah, it's getting very hard to reply to those. But it's fair enough. Uh, so yeah, if a band name uh, would be a good start, so I can look you up. Next to that band name would be a link to any band pages, so that I don't have to look you up. I can just click the link, ideally. But I don't mind doing the work if you've given me a band name. Well, 
what you're looking for in terms of the amount of artwork, whether it's how much for a front cover, how much for a full thing. You could even ask multiple questions. Could you give me a quote on this? Give me a quote on this, quote on this, and then I can break that down and you can see what works. That's absolutely fine. Um, I guess for me, any, I mentioned before, any references of my work that you're into, that always helps, but I generally end up asking that anyway. So that's, it's not a super important initial one. Um, try to think of a, try to think of three. <laughs> so a band name, a link to music. Uh, what could be a third one? Um, what about lyrics? Do you care about reading those at, at all? Say again, sorry? What about lyrics? Do you care about reading those at all? Uh, yes, but further down the line. Fair enough. Yeah. So the third one I was going to say would be like a um, a deadline date. If you want something next month, you really need to tell me. <laughs> Don't tell me, you know, later down the line. Or if we've got the full year, by all means, because I can look to my schedule and work out. So those three things. Or even so to go, sorry, to go with a band name would be a style. The band style, just to give me an idea of roughly where you're coming from. So musical style, about, you mean, right? Sorry? Musical style, you mean, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Just a rough genre. It doesn't have to be too detailed, just so I've got a rough idea. So those three should give me enough to kind of know what I'm coming into. And I, I feel like those are fair points for a band to deliver to a to an artist. And speaking of timelines, how much, how far in advance should bands be reaching out to artists, in your opinion? Months. At least three months, I think. Um, because I've, I've had a lot of projects come in and be like, right, I need it in a month. And then I've looked at the list of what they want. And sometimes I've made it work. But the budget will go up, obviously. I'm bringing that into my schedule. I'm not adding it on to my schedule, if that makes sense. So I'm kind of moving work around. There's no guarantee that's it's going to work every time. I, I sometimes try, especially if, uh, again, if they've put thought into that first email, I'm going to put in the effort to try and work with their schedule a little bit more. Uh, but I think three months is fair. But again, every illustrator is different. I can, for me, the actual idea discussion and the sketch process is longer than the inking process. Because once everything's sketched out and done and ready to go, I can type in an email, see you in a week, turn around to my second desk, get all that done and then back. Because I don't have to wait for any replies during that process. So if you allow as much time as possible for schedules to line up. Like some bands are on tour while they're talking with illustrators, which is fair. So you have to account for that. Um, some illustrators might have some time off booked in. So if you can come up with at least three months time, then the illustrator can kind of work. They've got some room to breathe with that. I think that's fair. Really good. Uh, I think just a last fun question. Um, you've worked with some really big bands, but do you have any dream bands that you haven't worked with yet that you would like to at some point in the future? Um, none in particular come to mind, to be honest. Uh, the bands that I work with at the moment, because I, <clears throat> because that music influences my work, it kind of organically throws it back out so that it almost lands with those bands as well. Because uh, with the halo effect, they, they, I don't think there was hardly any edits on the sketches other than the odd slight tweak. It was just like, we like this that you do, we like these colors, these textures. So because that style of like the melodic death, the old death doom stuff, that goes into my work anyway. So I can kind of, link that back and it's a cycle so in terms of like any absolute like dead set names don't think there is maybe catatonia i'd love to work with them um maybe behemoth but they've got their own style they're, they're very particular so that's fine and my kind of ornamental decorative stuff might not really work uh, so other than that no i i, I 
I'm kind of lucky in the sense that the bands I've like bands I've worked with, like I say, are kind of those would be the bands that I approached if that was how I did it. Um, but no, I'll have to think about that one if there's any bucket list okay. names, maybe. It's good to be content and happy with where you're at as well. Yeah. Curtis, anything to wrap up with? No, that's not going to take too long, so I'll have to uh, zip my mouth. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, Adrian, for coming on the podcast and everyone listening. Thank you for listening. And until next time, make like a bull and throw those horns up. Thank you, guys. <laughs>